Hi, this is uh, Ranjit and uh, welcome to this live uh, tech Q&A session where I'll be answering some of your tech related questions. And I tried it yesterday also, but for some reason YouTube just simply did not, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, send it to subscribers. Hopefully this time it actually works. So let's actually lo uh, look at it. Let me actually refresh it guys for a minute and see if it is working properly. Uh, looks like that. Let me check the audio. Yeah, it is working. So let's take the questions and guys, I will be posting the questions, uh, picking up the questions via Twitter and uh, you can post it on Twitter uh, using the hashtag that is known as Ask Kiki Ranjit. And as you can see, I have uh, quite a few questions already. Uh, so we'll be picking up that. I also have a bunch of devices here. You can ask about them. Also have the new Honor View 20 also with me. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's uh, do this live uh, session and hopefully the quality is a lot better. Uh, let me know how's the video and the audio quality of this live session. So let's start uh, taking up the questions and uh, got a bunch of questions. Let's start from this uh, Sudeep, the third one. Should I buy the OnePlus 60 or wait for the Honor View 20? And are they different from each other? Uh, yes, technically they are uh, pretty different. Uh, the OnePlus 60 is running on the Snapdragon 845, whereas this uh, Honor View 10, uh, let me show you the device itself. As you can see, it has this crazy back. Uh, it's the light reflecting, it changes it. And this is running on Huawei's uh, latest screen SOC. And this one has that, uh, what do you say, punch hole notch. Uh, let me actually uh, show you a video. In video, it uh, shows you the difference between this. Let me maximize it. Uh, let me play this video. Known as real meat bats. And, many of you and you, as you can see, you have that punch hole notch over this. So I feel this is the new trend now. All the new flagships of uh, 2019 uh, will be having that, at least on the Android uh, front. So definitely this is much more better. The OnePlus 60 might be having something like this. But again, this runs on Emotion UI. I just opened it, guys, so won't want to comment too much. Tomorrow I'll be posting a video about this one. And also we'll be taking snaps because they claim that it's a 48 megapixel uh, uh, behind and even the front-facing camera. Uh, let's see how it is. So yeah, that's the V20. We don't know the pricing also, but I frankly feel it might be closer to the OnePlus uh, 6T. Uh, uh, but yeah, technically right now, in terms of hardware, it is superior to the OnePlus 60. But the uh, beauty of the OnePlus 60 is that Oxygen OS. Uh, let's move to the next one, guys. Uh, looks like, again, uh, YouTube didn't uh, send the notification. I don't know why for the live stuff, it simply does not do that. I have no idea. Some bug with YouTube, man. Craziness. Anyways, let's uh, move to the next one. Uh, yeah, that's this. Yeah, uh, this is uh, Aishman is who seems to be the most promising in the mid-range market. Realme, Honor, Me, Nokia, and ASUS. Again, all of them are actually fighting with each other, and that as a consumer, uh, it's a good thing for us. Uh, by, for example, till last year, I would say specifically in the Indian market, I'm going to talk about. Uh, Xiaomi with the Realme devices were ruling the market in the mid-range. But uh, now, last year we had new players like Realme and Asus has also jumped. Nokia, again, I feel uh, the pricing, of, if you saw that Nokia 8.1 is slightly on the higher side. So strictly they're not competing in the mid-range market. They're sort of competing in the premium mid-range market. But it'll be interesting to see how it pans out this year. Uh, what will Realme do? Will Asus be still aggressive? And yeah, I know Xiaomi will be launching quite a few phones, but again, at what pricing? Because what we have seen with Xiaomi in last year, 2018, was that slowly they're increasing pricing of their smartphones. But let's see how they do it now. Let's just move uh, to the next question, guys. And uh, this is by Ankit. He's asking, uh, hey, brother, uh, how would you compare the iPhone XR with OnePlus 60 if price is not a concern? in area of longevity and performance. I would say uh, it is definitely better than the uh, OnePlus, uh, OnePlus 60. It has IP rating, OnePlus does not have that. Even in cameras, the cameras are much better on the OnePlus, uh, sorry, the iPhone XR. Uh, so yeah, the iPhone XR goes ahead in that. The build quality also I feel is better on the iPhone XR. But again, the iPhone XR is significantly more expensive. Definitely the camera is way better on the iPhone XR. Uh, so yeah, it is better, but again, there is a huge price difference. That is that is simply that we can't ignore. Okay, let's move to the, some of the next questions that we have. Uh, let's move. Uh, and uh, this is by Rajesh. He's asking about the Mi LED TV 4X Pro 55. 
is going to be launched at 10,000 rupees less than the previous one. Surprise, your comments on the specs and pricing. Actually, I have uh, that, I've got uh, it, and I tested it for the last two days. Maybe I'll post, uh, oops, sorry, 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 and one second, <laughs> something is up, uh, uh, getting calls. Uh, and uh, sorry about that, coming back to the MeTV, uh, uh, yes, uh, as I've told you, I have uh, the unit. I tested it for the last two days. And in fact, for some reason, I don't know why, uh, but the picture quality is better than the 55 inch prior one that is selling for 50,000. I am also baffled. I have to do a little bit more testing. I think so the backlighting, they have improved uh, a bit, but it is not as slim as that 50,000 one. The 50,000 uh, one uh, was very slim at the back. This is a little bit chunky, but uh, picture quality I feel is improved on this and audio is also actually improved on this 55 uh, one. So yeah, that's what it is. Let me just give, give you one second guys. Uh, Okay, let's just move to the next question and hopefully the live feed is working. And uh, let's go here. Okay, uh, this is by Samandan Das. He's asking a computer related uh, question. So let's just take this uh, because many uh, I do get a lot of questions like this. He's asking, can I buy the 2017 MacBook Air for minor web browsing and making Word documents along with 1080p video editing? Oh my God, the 2017 edition is actually pretty old i would say and also uh, uh what do you say uh, uh in fact the screen quality is actually not that good on it i have the older one 2014 uh, 2014 or 2015 one i think so it has the same processor uh but it, the one i have with is for four gigabytes of ram and as you have mentioned that you also want to do video editing i would say it might be actually pretty difficult to do video editing on uh, that one uh, so I would not, yes, you can do your word documents, general stuff and all those things, but for video editing, it can be sort of a bottleneck because uh, uh, sometimes, uh, because uh, a couple of days ago in my old MacBook Air, that's not the 2017, it was 2014 or 2015, uh, we tried some multiple 1080p clips and it was just struggling. So I would not suggest it for video editing. If you really want to do video editing, I would say uh, go with the MacBook Air, let me actually uh, let's just let me actually shift to Amazon and let's see uh, what's the uh, basically pricing uh, I would say uh, I would suggest the MacBook Pro 13 inch if you really want to do editing but again as you can see here the pricing is about 1 lakh 12,000 and in fact the new MacBook Air's pricing is also very close to it so if you want to do video editing and stuff uh, I would not uh, recommend the MacBook uh, uh, what do you say Air instead of the the MacBook Air you should go with this MacBook Pro uh, this is definitely way more faster and in fact I have this one uh, this is my travel laptop and you can easily do editing on uh, this one but don't go with the MacBook Air if you want to do serious video editing it is actually pretty slow for video editing I say that's the frank opinion so anyways let's move to the next question and I have been getting this sort of a question quite a bit let's just look at it now and this is by Sudeep. Uh, Snapdragon 660 supports uh, up to 25 megapixel camera, but the Redmi Note 7 has 48 megapixel with the same chipset. How can it be done or, or is it a fake lens? Uh, I am also not very sure. I think so they are doing some sort of pixel binning and hence able to get that 48 megapixel. Uh, so they're combining the pixels and doing some uh, stuff. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how is the actual quality when I get the device and been getting a lot of questions from you guys regarding the Redmi Note 7 when it's going to launch in India. As of now, no news about that from Xiaomi India. So I'm expecting it's still at least a couple of months away and maybe they will makes minor modification and it, they might launch it as the Redmi Note 7 Pro in the Indian market. So yeah, that's my frank opinion about it. Uh, let's move to the next one. Uh, getting some questions about Poco now. Oh, this is by Himanshu. I'm just going to take one question uh, from one user. Is Poco F1 worth buying now at 20,000 as the Redmi Note 7 and the Poco F2 are coming very soon? The Redmi Note 7 is having that uh, 6 series processor. How can you even compare it with the Snapdragon 845? So definitely, still I would say, yes, the Poco F2 at 20,000 is an incredible device. The camera is superb. The One of the best cameras that you can get for, with 20,000 uh, rupees. Uh, I like the phone. The only thing I hate about the Poco is Mi UI. And Mi UI, some of those ads that are coming in the UI. Apart from that, I love it. If you can 
stay with it now a lot of ads are not coming but they some of their own apps keep sending what do you say uh, ads uh, within the uh, uh, notification bar i hate that but apart from that uh, i think so as of now nothing can even beat the uh, poco uh, f1 but again uh, you can wait uh, poco f2 when it's going to come and what specs we don't know and they might increase the price of the poco f2 uh, that's my frank opinion uh, let's move to the next question let me just refresh guys one second where did the questions go uh okay let's uh move here i can see some more questions okay uh this is by deepak he's asking could the me soundbar replace the home theater for better sound and pricing uh it's very portable uh yes uh yes and no it cannot technically replace a proper 5.1 home theater setup but for the price of 5000 i had reviewed it two or three days ago i loved it uh does not give you that surround sound because it's just a stereo speaker but uh for movies and stuff you get that really immersive effect so yes uh if you are on a tight budget and you want a great soundbar in fact i would say none of the soundbars in that price range can even come close to it what they have done is an incredible job and even though it does not have that subwoofer you do get a little bit of space so i loved it for the price i loved it if it was for eight thousand or something i wouldn't have said but for five thousand rupees it's actually really really good again check out my review i generally don't praise products like that but i did praise uh, uh, that me soundbar because genuinely the product was so good uh, so let's move but again don't expect that 5.1 setup or something like that with that okay this is by tanmoy he's asking do you think uh, this uh, year oneplus market will drop quite a bit due to poco series of xiaomi uh, that would be interesting to uh, see if that happens, what they do with the Poco F2 and stuff. Uh, only thing that Xiaomi needs to improve is uh, MIUI and the ad situation. If they can do that, yes, they can compete with OnePlus because the biggest strength of OnePlus is Oxygen OS. Oxygen OS is very clean. I love it. No stupidity like ads or stuff, which is actually a big privacy thing. So I hope Xiaomi comes out very clean with the Poco F2. And uh, let's see, because what we are seeing with the OnePlus, and even uh, I mentioned that in my videos, uh, they are just increasing the pricing with every variant. Now the OnePlus 7, I am pretty sure it, the base variant might touch about 40,000 and the good variant that you want might be about 43, 44,000. So definitely the price is increasing on the OnePlus. And yes, I feel Poco and even the Zenfone, I have a very high expectations with the Asus Zenfone uh, 6Z whenever it launches. So yeah, these devices will definitely give good competition. And now we also have devices like this Honor and what, we don't know the pricing of this uh, uh, Honor View 20, but this is a flagship. Uh, and if they can undercut, uh, what do you say, OnePlus, uh, uh, then it'll be great because I feel the camera on this one will be superb. So a lot of competition now uh, for OnePlus. And if they continue to increase the pricing, I think so. Yes, they might eventually lose the market uh, share. Okay, this is... Uh, Again, uh, next question. I have already taken uh, this similar question, which is better. So let me just quickly just refresh uh, this, guys. And uh, where did it go? Okay, yeah, I've got a lot of questions now. So let's just go over here. And it's been what? How many minutes since we started? It's only really about 12, 30 minutes. So yeah, we will continue. Uh, where did this go? I have to just refresh the feed, guys, on Twitter, because I'm directly picking it up from the web page. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, some questions, uh, new questions. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is by Manoj. He's asking uh, about the Samsung M series. Your opinion? Uh, officially, Samsung India hasn't announced anything, but uh, uh, I am expecting that these devices will be launching very soon. And this is all from rumors, guys. I also don't have the unit, so or whatever, or I have seen their specs or what. But what I've heard from uh, these very strong rumors is that the Samsung M series is actually a new series by Samsung. And I think so this is gonna be sitting between the J series and the A series. And it won't be as expensive as the A series, but the build quality features uh, will be closer to the A series. So it'll be very interesting to see uh, how they price it and will they actually phase out the J series? So um, let's see uh, uh, how they do it. And uh, Samsung uh, says that this new M series is actually gonna be a very important device for them. So let's see how they price it in, in India. 
Okay, there's a soundbar question. Himanshu is asking, which soundbar do you recommend? 20 to 27,000 JBL 2.1 or the Polka Magnify Mini? Uh, I uh, personally own the Polka Magnify Mini. Again, check out my, the review I have already posted on my YouTube channel. You can check it out there. I love it for the size. Uh, it's immersive. And most of the uh, relatives, whoever came to my house, they really like uh, get shocked. Oh, that sound is coming from that. So if you want a compact sound bar, it's really small, it's just one feet and you get a valid subwoofer with that Polka Magnify Mini and the sound is really good. The only con that I have with that one is that no surround option, though they say that it tries to simulate 5.1 sound. No, I don't think so. It, try, uh, it does that properly. Uh, apart from that, I love it. Uh, the bass is punchy and stuff. Uh, uh, so it's actually really good. Uh, the JBL 2.1 I haven't uh, used. The regular JBL uh, soundbar I have used that is without the subwoofer. And that one for about 9500 was good. But again, as it didn't have the subwoofer, it didn't give me that uh, depth. But definitely the Polka Magnify Mini is actually really good. You can check out the reviews, international reviews also. Polka is uh, also a very uh, old, uh, what do you say, audio grade company. Uh, so rave reviews of it and uh, i was also surprised i'm actually happy with that product again check out my review for the pros and cons it has some cons so again check that out uh, for more info uh let's move to this one uh let's move yeah okay this is uh with Vittal is asking how do you think on a realme strategy on updating os by users asking question let's see what they do realme realme has mentioned that they have hinted that yes they will be coming out with their own uh, ui let's see when they do that and when it happens so i don't want to comment as of now if they move out of color os i i'll be really happy because that's one of the major cons that i have with every realme product i would say pricing is right but the user interface color os is i'm dragging it down uh this is by technopedias he says, I'm using the Galaxy S8 and the battery performance is not that great. Have they improved the battery on the S9 or is it the same? Uh, I wouldn't say if you use the regular S9, you'll get great battery life. That's the reason I uh, was using the S9 Plus. The S9 Plus actually has very good battery life. Uh, so if you want really battery life, don't go with the S9. Uh, go with the S9 Plus. But now uh, the S10 is launching. I think so. They, uh, Samsung has already announced the date. It's going to be launched in US on February 20th. Uh, so if you can wait and hopefully by March 1st week, it will launch in India. So if you can wait, uh, wait for that. But again, yeah, obviously the S10's pricing will be sort of uh, premium because it's a new one. But uh, S9, if you are not happy with the battery life of the Galaxy S8, don't go for the Galaxy S9. Go with the S9 Plus. S9 Plus definitely has way better battery life. Uh, let's move to the next one. Okay. Uh, this is by Dr. Sudeep. Uh, please say about tablet for reading books and browsing. Nobody speaks about it. Uh, is it very useful? As uh, you have mentioned that uh, you want a tablet for general reading of books and stuff, maybe PDFs and journals also you are a doctor. So it might have color stuff. Uh, so I, I think so you should go with the iPad, uh, the 2017 one you can go uh, with the 9.7 inch one. I think so that is for 25, 26,000 if I recall. Let's look at it. Let me see if I can find the listing of that one iPad. Let's just let me show you that screen. Uh, as you can see, yeah, the iPad 6 generation, as you can see, you can go with this one. Why? Because as you uh, told you're a doctor, you'll have a lot of medical journals and stuff. Uh, this is available for about 26,000. Again, check out, this is just Amazon listing. Maybe you'll get a better deal elsewhere. Uh, but as you said, you are a doctor. I feel uh, this is the best tablet that you can uh, get because you can open your journals PDF uh, that might be in PDF or in color. And also, uh, it's a great tablet overall, I would say. And the battery life is good. Uh, if you're just, I personally also have the Kindle uh, and I like it for reading just books and novels. But uh, again, sometimes when you have PDFs and stuff that is in color, that's where it is lacking. Hence, I would recommend you the iPad uh, one. Don't go with the iPad Pro, just the one that I showed you will be, you'll be very happy. And iPads age very well. It'll last you for four, five years. Uh, okay, again, uh, some uh, more question. This is by Tushar. How are the Realme Buds in comparison to the Mi Basic earphones for, uh, that are for rupees, uh, 400 rupees? Definitely the Mi earphones are better in terms of sound quality, but in terms of build quality, these Realme Buds, build quality is much better but yeah sound 
obviously uh, the me earphone strangely does a better job uh, i think so they spent all the money on the build quality and they didn't concentrate on the sound department with this uh, realme once but if you're not very critical of the sound uh, yeah just take casually then you might find this one also okay but i have ten, tested dozens of uh, earphones and yeah the me earphones in sound sound slightly better okay this is uh, i'll take this question uh, this is by uh, nithin and he's saying don't you think asus can provide pixel master camera app which is their official camera app on the max pro series uh, i hope they do that and i actually i have given this feedback to asus team just last week they asked me because i have tested the zenfone max pro m2 and even the max m2 they asked me what is the thing that you feel can be improved so i told them uh, if possible replace the stock app with your pixel master because your the stock app that you get uh, on uh, these asus max pro m2 etc is simply not intuitive and it's holding the camera the camera hardware is good i would say but the user interface is not that good i hope they implement it will they do it or if they can i have no idea but i have given the that feedback to their team let's see if they can implement it or not i don't know about the technical reasons they might be able to or not whatever licensing fee or whatever i don't know uh, how it works it's internal company stuff but yeah i have given them the feedback okay let's uh, uh move uh, um, let's move to this one a lot of uh, real me earbuds i'm getting a lot of question guys just uh, yesterday i had posted its full review on my youtube channel both on hindi and english watch that you will uh, get an idea about this one and uh, let me just look at uh, the questions let me just refresh it where did this go okay let me refresh it uh, again a lot of uh, questions uh, on your phones so let's just take this which one is the best earphone under rupees 10 a uh, thousand rupees this is very difficult to answer to be fair because i haven't tested every earphone out there uh, in the market but i have uh, tested dozens of earphones and i feel uh, the this jbl let me show you this jbl c100 si this is for 750 rupees is actually really good in terms of sound the only thing i don't like with this one is the build quality the build quality is weak but in terms of sound i feel it's very good i also like the audio technica clr 100 but the audio technica clr 100 does not have a microphone this one actually has that so i feel uh, this one in terms of sound it's very good but the build quality is very weak on this one it's for 751 sir uh, 750 rupees uh, i've heard uh, stuff about me pistons also uh, one more sorry but I personally i haven't tested so i can't uh, comment about it uh, sennheiser uh, uh, cx 180 is it good uh, i have it i will actually test it out and uh, see how good it is uh, i'll test it with this one and even some other uh, earphones it's in the pending list guys uh, so uh, don't worry i will be doing that shortly so let me just again refresh this and it's been like what 23 minutes since working and again do let me know how, what do you feel about the quality of these uh, live uh, sessions of video quality as well as uh, the audio quality and yes uh, i'm actually streaming first time at 1080p so hopefully it is uh, better oops let's just go back where does this go oh, top latest one second let me refresh it let's Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, okay, guys, one second. Okay, this is, uh, uh, this is by Kumar, he's asking, iPhone 7 or iPhone 8 in 2019? Obviously, the iPhone 8 is vastly uh, superior and better. The camera is actually much better on the iPhone 8. So if you're buying it now, go with the iPhone 8. It will age a lot uh, better, I would say and it's a better investment oh okay this is again another question uh roy is asking suggest me a budget phone my only priority is big battery uh what do you mean by budget i don't know around ten thousand rupees i did just compared the uh, real me uh to uh what was that the redmi 6 uh, uh redmi note 6 uh uh, uh I think so that was for 12,000 I compared and even the Asus Zenfone Max 
M2, yeah. And M2 came out at the top, and even the battery life was very good. So at 10,000 rupees, I would say the Zenfone Max M2 will do a good job. And uh, again, even at 14, 15,000, uh, you have the Zenfone Max Pro M2 because of that 5,000 milliamp hour battery uh, it's doing. But with the last update, they have screwed up the battery life. Hopefully, with the next update, they fix the battery life uh, on the M2 Pro. Uh, I hope uh, that helps you. Uh, again, capacity of the battery life is a big thing uh, in terms of that. Uh, 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 let's move to the next one. Uh, excited about the S10 design. <laughs> yes, the Galaxy S10 design I've seen. Again, uh, it's going to also have this uh, punch hole, uh, whatever, uh, notch thing. Uh, let's see. We have seen the leaks like this. I, and I think so. this is going to be the trend in uh, 2019, that uh, punch hole. Uh, in the display uh, that's going to be the new trend i think so so yeah that's what we are seeing uh, and i've heard that three variants of the galaxy s10 might be launching i, I think so that's a wrong rumor they might just launch two regular one regular size and slightly bigger plus size uh, but uh, we are hearing that there might also be one more variant that will be a cheaper one let's see what we get uh, on february 20th it's being announced let me quickly just check the audio once yeah it's working guys uh, okay, let's move to the next one and uh, some com uh, DSLR related question. This is by Sandak. He's asking, big fan of your show and reviews. In fact, I've been buying my phones by watching your reviews since 2014. Thank you. My question is, I'm looking to buy a camera centric phone uh, with 25 to 30K since I cannot carry the DSLR everywhere. Great camera phone. Uh, this is a tough one because uh, in that price range, uh, let's be frank, uh, the cameras are okay. Okay. Uh, under 20,000, I would say the Poco F1 uh, is actually really, really good uh, in terms of camera. To be very frank, uh, it has the best camera. Even uh, the Nokia 8.1, it was beating it in a lot of situations. In fact, I did a comparison with the Nokia 8.1. Uh, I feel the Nokia can improve. The Nokia 8.1 can improve its camera. It's the software processing that is a problem. If they can do that, then yes. Uh, it can beat the Poco F1, but at 28,000, uh, that 20 to 28,000, I feel the Poco F1, if you're just going to shoot in the auto mode and just you want the results, yeah, Poco F1 will get you great results. Even the Nokia 8.1 has a lot of potential, but it's the after processing and stuff that was creating a problem. Again, check out my channel where I did the in-depth camera comparison between the Nokia 8.1 and the Poco F1. Uh, because I won't recommend the Zenfone 5Z because I feel the Zenfone 5Z's camera is weaker than the Poco F1 and even the uh, Nokia 8.1. And above that, again, uh, we don't know, just, I don't know when, I, but I doubt this will be around 30,000, uh, the, uh, the Honor View uh, 20, what they are launching. Uh, so yeah, those are the two options uh, that I can frankly suggest as of now. Uh, Let's just move, guys. Like, oh my God, got 50. It's just, this Twitter feed is crazy. You know, just showing me 50 new questions suddenly. Uh, let's go. Uh, this is by Day. He's asking, which is better in terms of picture quality, Falcon 40-inch TV or the Xiaomi 43? Again, I haven't tested the Xiaomi 43-inch one. Uh, I have the 55-inch one, the new one, that is for 40,000. And definitely that 55-inch one, the new one that is for 40,000, has excellent picture quality. But I haven't compared the Xiaomi 43-inch uh, variant, so I simply cannot uh, comment about uh, the same because the panel is actually uh, pretty different on that. Uh, uh, okay, this is, uh, let's just take again a uh, TV related question. This is by Gaurav. Best television under 25,000, smart, non-smart, anything. My uh, uh, priority is picture quality. If your priority is picture quality, I would say uh, check a television with IPS panel. Uh, that will give you, uh, actually most people will be happy with the IPS panel. Uh, VA panels are also actually good. But uh, the problem with the VA panels is that you have to sit straight in the television. If you're sitting on the sides like this, you're here, this angle, then the picture fades a little bit. So I would say uh, most of the PA users will like the IPS panel. And now you are getting even a 1080p panel. Uh, I, I don't know, for 25,000, I don't know. I have the, uh, because I haven't actually tested a lot of budget-oriented uh, televisions uh, as of now. But I think so you can get the 40-inch variants. Uh, go with the 1080p uh, IPS panel. Uh, 
that should be good uh, go with the reputable brands i feel vu is good uh, some of the xiaomi tvs are good and even the i falcon uh, picture quality i like that so again do a little bit of research uh, i'm sorry i'm can't be very helpful because frankly speaking i am such a person that i do not like to comment about products unless i have specifically tested a particular model and uh, to be frank i haven't tested a lot of televisions under that uh, price point as of now uh, let's move uh let's move uh, best bluetooth wireless uh earphones under 2500 me thunderbeat me thunderbeat i would say people who just love extra bass 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 will like it apart from that uh, if you want that clarity is not there because the bass is overpowering on that i know some people who love that if you are that kind of a person then you might like the me uh, thunderbeat but uh, because of that excess bass uh, some of the high tones and the mid tones get muffled out but i know some people love that super extra bass so if you're that kind of a person you can go for that i personally i like balanced sound so that's not uh, one of my first choices i would say uh what else have i tested uh so i actually haven't tested a lot of wireless uh, earbuds in that range uh, recently um uh, Q7, uh, one second, let me see if I can find it. I had purchased it. No, I just don't recall, uh, guys, sorry about that on my head. Haven't, uh, there's one 999 rupees uh, Bluetooth headset that I had uh, reviewed on my YouTube channel. Again, just try to search for that. Uh, S8 Solo, I think so. It's It just looks very plain, nothing. But for 999 rupees, the Bluetooth uh, uh, reception was good. Sound quality was good, but it looks very, very ordinary. So yeah, that was one I, and I wasn't surprised that 999 rupees, the performance was very good. Solo S8, if I recall. Check my YouTube channel uh, for the review and details, pros and cons. <coughs> okay, let's move to the next one. Uh, DSLR related question. And uh, uh, why, uh, okay, this is Kumar, I will first take that. Why Android cannot reach the level of iPhone in terms of smoothness, feel and OS? Uh, it's very simple. Apple makes the software that is iOS and even the hardware, hardware. So they have total control over it. They can optimize each and everything. That's why iPhones actually age better also because Apple knows the limitations of the hardware and they're not uh, making iOS to work on, let's say 500 phones. They have just selected five or six phones on it, which it will be working so they can optimize it. It all comes down to software optimization. Many people actually uh, mistaken. If you just have hardware, you'll have great uh, performance. No, that's not true. The combination of hardware and software is what makes the magic work. And here, uh, even Google Pixel is an example of that. Google Pixel, the camera, they use a single camera lens at the back, but it's all the software magic. And even with four gigabytes of RAM, Pixel is able to get very smooth uh, experience. Again, Google has the advantage that because they are creating Android, they know internally everything. So it's a combination of hardware and software. And that is why Apple has a huge uh, leap, I would say. Uh, so yeah, that's what it is. Uh, this is a DSLR related question. This is by Siddhant. Good DSLR camera around 40,000. Uh, you didn't say what is your priority. Uh, I would say if your priority is video, for example, I had got this as my secondary backup camera. I don't know the exact price of this. This is the Canon uh, 200D. Uh, I think so you can get it uh, at a bargain now. And if you shoot video, this is awesome. Uh, yes, video only it can shoot up to 1080p. Uh, but it has dual pixel auto focus and many of the what do you say uh, videos that you have seen uh, me shooting in this angle is actually uh, shot with this one so you can go with this one let's check the price of this one right now let me give you an idea how much it is it's known as the canon 200d let's see uh, if i can find it and and uh, one second guys always in the live stream mouse goes up yeah 200d Oh, it's 50 with the lens. Uh, without the lens, I think so. It's uh, slightly on the expensive side, 40, 41 it is telling me. Uh, so yeah, yeah, you said your budget is around 40. So definitely you can go with this one, as you can see. And you're getting the 18 to 55 uh, kit lens with this. Again, shop a little bit. Uh, this is, it says it's 41,000. Uh, so hopefully, 
uh, this should uh, get the job uh, done for you. I like it uh, as a static camera also, the quality is good, but really excels in video because of that uh, dual pixel autofocusing. So even if you move around, uh, you don't have a cameraman. For example, I don't have a cameraman right now. Uh, even with that, it actually uh, works. So, so guys, uh, let's just end this live session because it's over 35 minutes uh, now. So I'll be ending this one. And do let me know what do you think about these live sessions? Should we do it? I am just experimenting right now with them. Uh, maybe we, uh, Sunday is a good time. Let me know. Uh, I actually want to do this at Sunday evening at around 8 p.m. But today I have to actually go out. That's why I scheduled it at 1 p.m. So what do you think? Should we do these live tech Q&A sessions every Sunday, maybe evenings at 8 p.m.? Or do you think this afternoon time like 1 p.m. is uh, ideal? Do let me know in the comment section below. And do let me know what do you think about these live sessions and how is the uh, quality of the video and audio of these live sessions. So guys, uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. And if you guys are still not subscribed to my YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. This is Ranjit and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care guys and have a wonderful Sunday. Bye-bye.